Hi, and welcome to the Occupy Your Kai Report. Today is our 10th show, and it's May 11th, 2012. Um, some of you may be watching this on um, May 12th in the morning. Uh, some of you may be watching it on May 13th or beyond, so uh, we'll talk about that in a minute. Um, <clears throat> let's see, we're going to talk first uh, about Richardson Grove today. And we'll also be talking about the Occupy Street Fair over in Fort Bragg. And for those of you who are watching this on Saturday morning, you can get over to Fort Bragg today and catch the Occupy Street Fair. And that will be from 11 to 5. And it should be pretty cool. There's going to be a lot of speakers. There's going to be um, vendors. There's going to be all kinds of Occupy energy and speeches. And uh, it should be a pretty good... Uh, good experience. There's no admission. It's a street fair style. So come on over and join us uh, if you haven't got anything to do today. <clears throat> and then uh, the rest of our show today is going to be on foreclosures. And we have Tom Ray from Occupy with us today. And we're going to be talking about foreclosures. We're going to be watching a little bit of a, of a video that he brought for us. And it should be a pretty good show. So um, to start off really quickly, this weekend... Up at Richardson Grove, um, just north of Laytonville, we did have the show with um, with Ellen, uh, who was on here a couple shows ago, talking about Richardson Grove and how they want to expand 101, and they want to cut the roots on some of the redwoods, and, and on and on and on. Well, they are going to be doing a, a, an Occupy four days of Richardson Grove, starting Saturday, May 12th, through the 15th, so that'll be uh, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. You can go up there, you can spend the night, you can camp out, you can familiarize yourself with the Grove, you can hang out and relax. And they are really creating a space for people to go up and relax. And a lot of the people from Occupy Oakland are going to go up to get away from the hot Oakland environment uh, that Occupy in Oakland has been under... A lot of stress, a lot of conflict, and a lot of them are going to go up and chill out at the Grove. So if, if you uh, want to do that in the next few days, uh, go up and they will, they will show you around and show you a good time. And you can never lose with those big redwoods. So uh, if you want information further on what I'm giving you here, go to our um, website. You can see there on the screen, OccupyUkiah.info. And there's more information, details of Richardson Grove, how to get there, what's going on. Okay, and then, for those of you watching on Saturday morning, the 12th, today is the Occupy Mendocino Street Fair. And we can go to the uh, blue screen here and look at the uh, Occupy Mendocino website. <clears throat> They've got a really nice website here. Uh, some great pictures. We are the 99%. Um, and they're talking about their uh, Occupy Mendocino Street Fair Saturday, May 12th, actually from noon to 5 p.m., uh, East Laurel between Maine and Franklin. And so some of the details. Let's have a look at this. Have fun learning about our many Occupy issues. Get involved in changing our country's dynamics. Locally known politicians, economists, and community organizers will speak 30 to 50 local nonprofit organizations and Occupy friendly businesses share their goods and services with the public, locals, and tourists. Occupy Mendocino is hosting a major event to educate and energize support for economic justice while creating a community building day. Uh, there's going to be a speaker platform with visiting uh, political leaders economists and others. We talked about that. Um, some of the ideas that, that people will be talking on is how the 1% has gamed the system. I'm going to bring the view up a little bit here so I can read it. How the 1% has gamed the system while hurting the rest of us. How Wall Street deregulation and greed caused crashed the economy and created the Great Recession, which we are in. How the super wealthy and corporations get special treatment and tax rates at our expense. How our American democracy is failing. What can you do to help things change? You can go to their website 
at Occupy Mendocino, I believe it's .net. Yes, it is. Occupy Mendocino .net, and you can uh, get all the details there. Come on over and join us. If you're watching us uh, Saturday morning, come on over. It's going to be fun. We're going to have several Occupy groups. The Occupy Ukiah will be there with our canopy. We're going to be right on the corner of Main and Laurel, right by the Tangent Store. Uh, come and drop in and say hi. We've got a little bit of literature. We always are down for talking about issues and what's going on. So that's what's happening on Saturday. And that's pretty much it uh, for our intro. And for the rest of the show, we're basically going to be talking about foreclosures. And Tom Ray is here with us today. And Tom not only does a lot of uh, great research, but he is the man who does our website. And, um, you know, we always do uh, really appreciate the work he does, uh, posting videos, posting information, um, posting pictures, all kinds of stuff about what's going on with the Occupy um, uh, Ukiah group and also uh, some of the national stuff that's going on. So um, Tom's right here with us. Welcome, man. <laughs> wow. Yeah, nice to Good be to here. Good to see you. And uh, so, basically, uh, Tom also has a radio show on KMAC, uh, 5 o'clock on Wednesdays. And you just did your show on Wednesday. How did that go? Uh, yeah, it was really interesting. We had more of a philosophical discussion with uh, another member of Occupy. His name's Bart. And we got into, uh, you know, a whole, you know, what... And why aren't there more worker-owned businesses, you know, and right. things like that? Why, why we have this particular system and got into more things like that. And, and a little on the international scene, which our next show, we're going to focus on uh, the Occupy movement and other movements around cool. the country cool. uh, and in, in Europe and throughout the world. Nice. Well, everybody remember, you can catch the Occupy the Airwaves show on KMEC on Wednesdays from 5 to 6. And I, I, I'm oftentimes working around that time, but I've been able to catch it quite often, and it's, it's great. Great information, great fun. So let's jump into our uh, foreclosures here. Um, our number one question was, how many foreclosures in Mendocino County in California? Well, uh, since... 19, since 2008, there's 1.2 million foreclosures in California. And by the end of this year, uh, there'll be 2 million. Uh, so, you know, it, it's, it's still going on. There's a lot of foreclosures. And California is, is the hardest hit of all 50 states. One of every five foreclosures in the U.S. is in California. Wow. One in three hundred housing units in California are foreclosed properties. I saw another statistic that was really shocking. One in ten children in the United States have been in foreclosed homes. Wow. So, you know, as far as in this county, uh, we have around 600 foreclosures every year in this county. It keeps on going. And what's really... The, the thing that's really sad about it is that, you know, uh, I mean, it's, a, it's improving a little, but, you know, during the heyday years between 2007 and 2010, a lot of these foreclosures were done with forged or fraudulent documents. Right. They didn't go through the normal process. They wanted to speed it up, and so they did this thing called robo-signing. Robo-signing. Yeah, robo-signing. So was that that was where people, if I understand, and I'm probably more like um, some of the more average viewers. I haven't done as deep a research on this as you have, that's for sure. But robo signing wasn't that where people basically just had all these documents come across their desk and they didn't read them. They were just told to sign them, and they really that's all they did was just sign documents. Well, all basically, day. you know, a lot of people don't realize it. In, in the old days, not even that long ago, you know. Maybe 30 years ago, most banks uh, actually owned the homes, owned the right, titles, right. or they owned the mortgage. Right. 
And then in, in the, uh, about 20 years ago, they, they started this thing, the MERS system. And then they found, and the reason they did that is because it took so long to record all these documents. So right. they create this shortcut system. But it's been taken advantage of. And so what happens, now most banks don't own mortgages. They only service them. So actually, what what the banks did is they they created documents and and forgeries that said that they actually are responsible for this title, but legally they're not. And where are these titles? These titles are now secured bundled uh, securities on the Wall Street. So different, they bundle them up and sell them, and then they get bundled again and sold again. That's yeah, that I mean, in the space of a month, your title could be sold six times. And the thing is. You know, okay, you know, it, there's a lot of money, like the, every time you do, a, it's bought and sold, the county, sh in this county, should get $7. Now, we did some investigation, and some, that doesn't happen. So there's, in this county alone, there's thousands of transfers that happen, and no one paid for them, like they're supposed to. Well, you were saying And because they don't even know about it, because they use these documents. Right. Well, didn't you say 600 a year in Mendocino County alone? Yes. So 600 times seven dollars, just in a year. That's that's a bit of money well, for the county, that, isn't well, it? Well, yeah, but that I told you in a month, the title could be bought and sold six, six or seven times, times so then a month. Times that, that's a lot of money. Yeah, and We're actually, what happened in uh, recently in Louisiana, 40 parishes. That's what they call counties, counties in Louisiana. Right. right. They decided to prosecute uh, 12 banks under uh, gangster laws, the Rizzo Act. <laughs> racketeering? Because, <laughs> racketeering, because they were, it, it was a system, they used this MERS system to get around a pain, and it, it, it could work out in Louisiana maybe $50 million for they the whole state. In this state, laws. it could be even more. Right. So, okay, that's just one aspect, you know, but... Having the, these documents and not following the procedures, you know, you know it, it's uh, so that, see, this is the thing that, another thing that's sad. If the banks, you know, they said, oh, we can't make loan modifications. Well, that's because they don't have the title. So, well, you know. So they don't have the title. They can't make loan modifications, but they can foreclose and collect and resell that property and make a profit off it? Well, that's the thing. Banks actually make a lot more money for closing homes than doing loan modifications. Right. And because right. they have all these fees. And, it, you know, in the past, you know, it, you know, most of the time this system worked when they, it was going pretty good and, and having securities, more, bundled securities was a safe bet. But what happened is these banks went out, uh, and Bank of America was one of the worst. They got, they said, Oh, no job, uh, you know, no bank account. Oh, we'll just sell you the house anyway. And and or else they they if they miss one payment, the interest rate would go up would like go way twenty up. percent, just like a credit so card. So they they knew that these people would fail. Right. And they kept on and they targeted actually uh, low income places and they didn't qualify them or nothing. They didn't even follow the normal procedures, and so you know. The, the people that own these securities actually lost a lot of money. A lot of mortgage companies went out. Right, But, right. see, the banks didn't really own the mortgages. So, so who made the money then if the mortgage companies went under? Who, who well, okay, the, the other ones, the last people that holds the goods. I mean, <laughs> that's basically it. The securities, you know, wait, okay, to give you an example, right now, uh, Italy is, is uh, I think, is suing Goldman Sachs. And it's because they were sold one of these one mortgages. And it was and, no and good? It is, it, and as a result, they, they thought they would make some money from it, right? Because you buy low, and then right. that's how right. the Sell stock market. And the thing is, they bought it, and then it went down. It's gambling. And if it goes up, you make a lot of money. Right. right. So, and then as a result, they went to default, but the bank didn't lose anything. Because they only, they, they just only bundle, they, they only service these things and give it to Wall Street. And so they get a cut each time, 
You know, they also they sell insurance, you know, foreclosure insurance. That's the biggest right. scam happening right now. Foreclosure insurance, how yeah. does that work? Well, the thing is, they say, oh, well, you know, we'll do a loan modification, but you've got to buy this foreclosure insurance. <laughs> so the thing is, if they come up with another thing to make some more money. But there was a settlement with the government. Uh, it was, I think it was $26 billion. And uh, Bank of America is now going out there. And if you uh, haven't paid your, your uh, mortgage for two months and your house is underwater, which yeah, means... Yeah, you owe more you, than it's worth. Right. You can actually get a loan modification. And legally, Bank of America has to do that. But be careful because they're going to try to sell foreclosure, foreclosure insurance and all this other stuff. But they made a settlement, and that, you know, at so least... How does foreclosure insurance work? You obviously, whenever you buy insurance, you have to make payments. Well, so then, in other words, they're saying, well, then if, if, if you fail on your mortgage, if it forecloses, then it'll be covered because you've been, you bought this policy? Yeah. So what's, what's wrong with that then? How is that, is that, how is that a bad thing? Well, the thing is, then you'll fall behind on that one, too. Right. I mean, they, they think the whole <laughs> game is... The, just I mean, as right. a summary, okay, that's, this is, this is the whole thing Jeez. that was really interesting. It says, let's recap. The banks created impossible loans, increased interest rates, interest-only loans that convert to interest plus principal yep. that ultimately cause homeowners to fail. Yep. They create this bubble. They create overvalue on these houses, right. and they sold them no matter what. And they said, from the bank's point of view, the more mortgages they process, they make more money. And they said that the houses were actually worth more than they actually were? Is well, it was saying? a bundle because the, it, it was okay. all part of the, it became like the casino of Wall, you know, Wall right. Street because right. that's, that's how it's all based in. But right. like I said, the last one that holds those securities loses. <laughs> and the banks didn't really own any of it. I mean, I could buy a whole, I could buy 200 houses, this was a, a few months ago, for $1,600. 200 for 1600 total for but all of those a bundle security this legally but then I, you'd be on the hook for but then, property taxes yeah and and nbr did an experiment yeah. no i didn't actually buy them i bought the bundle security so if it went up and yeah this security was you can buy this slot and they did this on npr and the thing is when they sold it six months later, they lost eight hundred dollars. <laughs> so, <laughs> so it, you know, it it is. So it's gambling. It's a good, yeah. It's so they gambled. And then we had to bail them out because all of a sudden they had all these toxic loans that they had to pay back, and they didn't have the money. So the government, you know, said, they, "Oh, poor babies." Right. Right. <clears throat> and they set up the system to fail in the first place, and then they get bailed out. And you know, but you know, that's. That's a thing. So uh, I guess uh, I, in Greensboro, uh, North Carolina, uh, they did have an Occupy group, but they got them to do an audit of their office. And actually, they had an audit here in San Francisco, the county recorder in San Francisco. Right. He found that 84% of his foreclosures had fraudulent or forged documents in Right. It. I think we've talked about that a little bit on this show before. But 84%. Yeah, that's and a lot. And we wanted to try to do that here, and, you know, we'll go that in later in the show. Yeah. But I think, you know, we want to get, uh, I want to show you this but piece. Before we do that video, mm -hmm. right? you have a thing, I'm, I'm looking at our, our info that you gave us here. Uh, you have a, th it says, for more info. Karen'sPerspective.com foreclosures more profitable than loan modifications slash. Do we have this as a lower third or not? Did we? Did we? No. So I guess we don't. I'll, I'll skip that then. Wait, where okay. was this? Well, this was uh, after oh, no, number no, two. No. We don't have that. Okay. No. Well, we'll skip over that. But is that this is on a, our website? That is a web. Uh, that will get on the website. That's, okay. That's basically. Uh, that's basically a, a link. Uh, those links that I, I'm going to put on the website, is, it, it tells you why it's more profitable for banks to, to do foreclosures. And, and those and two links that, I, that I'll put on the website, I'll put okay. it up tonight. Okay. Right? So look for that. If you're really into this, 
you can go to the website and Tom puts up great stuff and there will be a couple of links uh, right. that will tell you things like why the banks make more money foreclosing than modifying your loan. And, and we, They really don't want to help you. We, they just we, want to make money. We have a section on that. Yeah. Uh, we have a foreclosure section on the website. You just Great. See, you, know. you can click on that. I believe right. I've seen that. And, and you mm. can click on the little icon that says foreclosure. Right. Yep. Right. I have seen that. So do we want to go to the video? Are yes. We ready? Okay. This is from the Rachel Maddox show. And, and it and it goes into a, a segment you know, about this woman that said, "Well, don't leave your house because you know if you start going in the foreclosure mode, I mean, you should definitely, you know, I'd get some help. Yeah, we do have a group called the Homeowners for Justice, right? And they will help you. And the thing is, you got to go to see what records that they put in because a lot of foreclosures could stop or they could put an injunction if they don't file certain documents. Right. And that's what has happened. They didn't file certain documents. And people don't even check their records. So it's very important that if you start seeing this happening. Right. And, and don't bank, just roll over. No. And also, Get proactive. okay, this happens with Bank of America. They'll say, oh, yeah, we'll do a loan modification. But at the same time, they're doing foreclosure proceedings. <laughs> At the, and the two parts of the bank don't even talk to each other. Right. And now you're really close to this loan modification, and all of a sudden your house has just been foreclosed, and you're just talking to them. And that's yep. why the Homeowners' Bill of Rights was, that's one of the things. And we're going to get to that after yeah. this uh, right. video, right? Right. Okay. Are we ready? Yes. Let's show our video here. This is uh, Rachel Maddow. She's great. We love Rachel. She's on MSNBC. And here we go. Don't leave your home. Because you know what? When those companies say they have your mortgage, unless you have a lawyer that can put his finger or her finger on that mortgage, you don't have that mortgage. And you're going to find they can't find the paper up there on Wall Street. So I say to the American people, you'll be squatters in your own homes. Don't you leave. They're also looking for new things to do about it here and across the country. In Greensboro, the, the occupiers have started formal training for volunteers, uh, like Lori Lanier, to examine the documents in new foreclosures, to look for signs that the bank has not got the right to kick that particular family out onto the street. You'll be trained to seek out evidence of fraud, including robo-signing. If the documents don't hold up to scrutiny, then the bank might not be able to foreclose, or the family might at least be able to get into a better position to negotiate an extension or a new payment plan or something. Already, Occupy Greensboro filled up its first fraud detection training. 35 regular Americans, just citizens, saying they are ready to dive into records at the county clerk's office to help some homeowner they maybe don't even know. And more North Carolina counties are asking for classes like this, too. Going after the banks by going through their paperwork turns out to be not that hard to do. Regular people can do it with a little training. And people want to do it. It's popular. People want to take these trainings and learn how to do this thing. It kind of makes you a mix between a geek and a savior house superhero. And the popularity of doing this, though, is in part because it works. These folks diving into bank records for signs of mortgage fraud, it is looking more and more like they may really be onto something. This is Jeff Thigpen in his office in Greensboro, North Carolina. He's the elected county register of deeds, which under normal circumstances is one of the most humble, little noticed jobs in government, right? Jeff Thigpen's got Greensboro records going back to 1771. If you ask him, he will pull down the old books and show them to you. All this, look, all this documentation of who owns what, signed by actual humans using their real names and old-fashioned ink in the 1700s, the records showing who owns what, going back as long as the government exists, basically. It's who owns what land and who owes who money for it. But Jeff, this county register, says he cannot be sure anymore who owns what in Greensboro or who owes whom, or who has the right to kick anybody out of their house and into the street for not paying. Jeff Thigpen's little county register office in North Carolina went back through a few years of records, and they found, just for a few years, thousands of documents filed by big banks and mortgage companies in these document mills. Thousands of documents that Jeff Thigpen says look to him like forgeries. Like the companies that filed them just did not care. I can't make up my mind as to whether or not they're walking over me 
or they're just completely ignoring me, you know. And both are pretty humiliating, you know. Uh, it's just kind of take your pick, which one is it? And um, Except that now you can sue. Yes, we can sue. Last week, Jeff Thigpen's little county office took more than two dozen big banks and mortgage companies to court. It's Jeff versus Bank of America, Jeff versus Wells Fargo. He says they wrecked 250 years of fair dealing in his county, and it's his job to fix it. Quote, this lawsuit seeks to have defendants clean up the mess they created. That's from paragraph one. It is hard to put a legal case more plainly than that. Jeff, Jeff Thigpen wants, wants the court to appoint an investigator to go through the documents on people's houses, to find the mistakes, and to set things right. He wants the banks to clean up the mess he says they have made for his office, the mess they have made in his county by making a mockery of the legal paperwork that you need to prove you own something in America. He says until the banks do that, the people of his county cannot buy and sell property with any real confidence about who owns it. The records, he said, have been, been that corrupted by the banks. And, he says, the families kicked out of their homes, the bank documents that justified that, some of those documents, he says, may have been fraud. Public recording offices are part of our democracy and the rule of law, and the laws that govern them need to be respected. And if you don't respect that, then why, why, why am I any better than Wikipedia? I mean, and if that's the case, Wikipedia would be better than me. You know. Explain that. Well, I mean, at least on Wikipedia, you'll have multiple people trying to correct what's going on and get the story right. All we would be doing would be logging in information signed by people four to 15 different times with no verification, and then people could go out and use it for a while. They had the legal force of Wikipedia <laughs> through my office. You know, I mean, it's basically, if you don't get public recording offices right, you don't get the judicial system right. I mean, it's if these documents are certified for my office and used in court proceedings, if they are not right, it is a fraud on the court system, baby. Jeff Thigpen says he has already found about three dozen foreclosures in Greensboro, three dozen, where he now considers the documents that justified those foreclosures to be seriously in question. Three dozen Greensboro families put out on the street who maybe should not have been. What has happened in Jeff's office, this situation with thousands of documents that he says appear to have stuff missing or forged signatures, this same situation quite likely exists in every county in the United States. And if you look around, you will now see that lawsuits like this Greensboro one are popping up in Ohio and in Kentucky and in Oklahoma and in Massachusetts with the promises of more to come. Oops. Okay. All righty. Well, that cut off a little short. Um, and we apologize for the uh, jerkiness of the picture. Um, we've got an awesome engineer in the booth, a couple of them today. Uh, but we're still learning, and, and uh, we're going to be uh, perfecting our video uh, process in the future. Greg Simtick is in the booth today, uh, as always, doing a great job. And Sean Mendelson is in there training with him. And um, I'm glad to have as much help as we can possibly get. So let's go back with Tom here and talk about that video. What did we see, Tom? Well, it explains, you know, some of the procedures. And that's one, one of the things that, uh, you know, we, the Occupy Ukiah and Occupy Mendocino did go to the county board of supervisors. And, right. and, and we did ask them to maybe do an audit here, which they did in San Francisco. And because of it, San Francisco passed a foreclosure moratorium, which it doesn't really stop foreclosures, but it does put them on, you know, legally that's more of a federal or state law. But, and, uh, and we also, and, and we, we had an Occupy uh, scene of the crime protest, and, it, you know, the supervisors here really want to do something. So they did write an official letter on the stationery, the county stationery, to our legislators to ha pass the Homer's, Homer's Bill of Rights laws, series of laws. And they wrote a letter endorsing to pass that. And, you know, there's only two counties in the state that actually have done that so far. So, so what is the Homeowner's Bill of Rights? For, for uh, those who may not have ever heard that before, can you give us a summary of kind of what, what the spirit of that, that is? 
Well, it, it basically uh, provides basic standards of fairness in the mortgage process and, and to dual track foreclosures, which, what, like I said before, sometimes the bank will be saying, oh, we'll do a loan modification and then they'll foreclose. Behind so, your back. Right, and they'll do that. So that prevents. Another thing is that okay. uh, it's going to include, in a mortgage process, there has to be only one single point of contact for owners. You know, with this, all this uh, buying and selling, it's really hard to find out who really owns your mortgage. And so this law will point out, you know, to help you find that. And, and, uh, and then there's other, there's uh, protections for some, some people, your rent and your place, and uh, for a landlord who's being foreclosed. So there's some tenant protections. So they won't just kick you out just because your landlord wasn't following, even though you've been a good tenant and been paying your rent. Right. The landlord sudden, might not. They say, not. sorry, you're getting foreclosed. Right. Yeah. And then, uh, and, and of course, uh, it will also provide enhanced legal enforcement to defend homeowner rights uh, and, and also set up a special grand jury to investigate some of this stuff. Mm. So... Uh, and the, you know, and this this was brought up by Camilla Harris, which is the district attorney of yeah. California. She actually came up with these, and she is the one that helped create this national settlement. Originally, they were going to settle for a lot less, like fifteen billion. She made it go up to twenty six before she said okay. Tw now, what does that mean? Who gets that money? And twenty six billion? Why? What, well, what for? The, to help pay for the loan modifications. So the banks actually, have to pay for that. And where is that money coming from then? To banks. So they are actually having to put, they are having to invest that much into loan modifications yeah. rather than foreclosing on people. Yeah. But, you know, it's really a small amount because the actual amount of all this stuff came out to about $47 trillion. So, you know. <laughs> $26 billion is nothing. I know. Yeah, billion and trillion, there's a big difference I between mean, those numbers. You know, in, in the... So, you know, we're, we're trying to do that. And, and also in, uh, I think it's in Missouri, uh, they actually, this one uh, place actually tried to prosecute the company and the, these people uh, for the foreclosure documents, the ones they think, the fraudulent ones, and they could get up to fines of $5,000 or six months in jail for each count. And this one guy got 46 counts. 46 counts of fraud? Yeah, and I brought this up to the Board of Supervisors that they can make money from this by prosecuting. We have thousands of fraudulent documents in the recorders, which the banks can't get to it. So how do we get, how do we pull that information well, out? See, that, if in the video, what happened uh, is the Occupy group organized 35 people to do the audit and help the county. Right. And we're waiting now to get an answer with that and also whether the county would prosecute. So we're still working with the county to find out what they want to do. But somehow, <clears throat> for, okay, now this is, this is what I understand. Tell me if, if there's been more that's found out since then. And we reported this oh, a couple shows back um, when you spoke to the... Board of Supervisors, um, there was uh, some possibility that people of the general public could be trained to do audits and pull up some of this fraudulent information so that legal proceedings could proceed, pursue. Is that still well, a possibility? Well, it could be a possibility. I mean, the, the, problem, the major problem is there's only a few people in their office. So we're trying to get some expert help. In the reporter's help. office, yeah. where, the, where the fraudulent information Yeah, rests. and they can only help with so many people right. and all this stuff. And see, in, in the Greensboro one, they had more help, and they had some expert trainers. So we have to go through a training section with some people that are expert because to find the fraudulent documents, it's not that easy because all right. the recorder will do is to show us how to use the equipment. And you've got to find it yourself. Yeah, and so we're working on that process so right now. So if I understand, though, we can, we can tell people right here today that if you're interested in learning how to go through this audit and helping the county find this fraudulent information, come to an Occupy meeting, get in touch with us, 
And we can get them in touch with the recorder's office. Well, when, no, we. When and if the time comes, is that well, is that relevant? I wouldn't I wouldn't do that right away no? yet okay. because we're still talking to them. And also, we want if we get that information, we want to find out if they're going to be prosecuted. And so we're still looking into laws that they could. In Missouri, they have laws that they can do this, but we have to find out if that's what true. What laws they may have broken? Criminal code laws. Right. Takes forgery a lot, of, a lot and of work. Forgery and yeah, so we're still yeah. working on it. Yeah. Um, you know and you know and and also you know we want you know we're still lobbying and it is a long drawn out process and it's yeah. confusing. Well, nonetheless, I have to say, and I'm doing this a lot on this show, and I'm, I'm going to do it every time. Tom's a guy that's working really hard. He's doing a lot of research. He's he works really hard for Occupy Ukiah. We need help. Everybody needs help. There are so many issues for Occupy to face. So if you are, let's say, real estate savvy, if you're a broker, if you're an agent, and you know the real estate business, and you feel like rolling up your sleeves and helping us, please do. Please do, because Tom could use some help. We could all use it. And this might end up making a bunch of money for the county down the line. So. Yeah, I mean, um, it, it could if we prosecute people. They're doing it in Missouri and in Louisiana. Yeah. They're, they're serious. And they here, you know, things are being slowed down a little. But yeah. at least the Homeless Bill of Rights is going through committees. And there is a lobbying against it, and we're asking people to write letters. Uh, that's important to contact your... Uh, so, excuse me, what would we, where would we write a letter to? Well, to your uh, legislator. So still it's Mike Thompson until June something. So after that, we'll write a letter to whoever's mm. our new right. person in office. And we'll, we'll, we're going to put all this information on the website. So in okay. the next few days, we'll have all this information. Cool. cool. But it's important. If you're going through this process, you should definitely contact the homeowners for justice. And okay. the person there is C.J. Holmes. And she's an angel real estate person because she's seen she's, how so many... She's amazing. And, yes. and she said that, you know, a lot of real estate people, some of them own property, and they got ripped off too. So wow. real estate people wow. have been getting ripped off. Wow. Don't so, piss off real estate people. So that's important. <laughs> and, and she's a good person to contact. Now, where is she? Is she in Fort Bragg? No, she's, she's in, in Santa Rosa. She's in Sonoma County. Okay. No, and yeah. so you're saying if, if people are being foreclosed on... Right. Don't just roll over. Contact Homeowners for Justice. You can go online, and um, there's the phone number on oh, the screen. Yeah, and, and their website is amazing. I would spend time re If you right. read her website, everything you need to know and learn about is there. So you can go to, the, to uh, Google and Google Homeowners for Justice, and their website will Yeah, be. we okay. Yeah, it's... it's it works out the same way. HOFJ.org. Yeah. No, dot .com. Well, it says .org here. Well, nonetheless, if you Google Homeowners for Justice, right. you'll get it. Right. And the call so her phone don't number. don't give up. If they're trying to foreclose on you, don't give up. Call these people. They actually really, really welcome your, uh, your information because they're trying to find as much of the fraudulent practices as possible. So it's very likely if 84 percent of the of the uh, of the foreclosures were done fraudulently in San Francisco, it's very likely that that same percentage is being done here. Those those banks and organizations aren't going to you know suddenly be nice guys just because they're in Mendocino County. Mm -hmm. They're going to take advantage of us just the same way. So if you're being foreclosed on, try to get in contact with Homeowners for Justice. There's the phone number. Don't give up. Let's nail these guys. Yes. Yes. We're all about nailing guys. Yeah, and, you know, <laughs> if you have a, a, a bank account with Bank America, Move take it money. out. Move and and it's not a, even a safe bet. No. Their stock is going down. Yep. They're having a lot of problems. Yeah. They really, you know, and it's coming, you know, their karma yep. is coming back to them. You may have seen us out on the street on the May Day, uh, um, May Day March. We were out in front of Bank of America. We were out in front of Chase. We were out in front of Wells Fargo. Once again, we really ask you, if you have your money in one of these three banks, move your money. 
take it out and put it in one of the local credit unions. Local credit unions are one of the best things because those banks invest locally in small businesses, small projects around mm -hmm. the county and around the local yeah, region. And, and they don't, don't, don't invest in the stock market or Wall Street. Right. For instance, I, not into that. I pulled my money. I used to have my money in Bank of America. Um, when my dad was passing away, it was convenient because we he had money up in Washington that I had to handle for him as he was failing uh, with his health, and that worked. And then when 2008 hit, I couldn't stand it any longer. When the crash happened and I saw the kind of practices Bank of America was doing, I said, I'm moving my money. And I went to Redwood Credit, and those people are awesome. Two years ago, they sent me a letter and said, we're lowering the APR on your credit card from 12 to 9. And I, I couldn't believe it. Nobody's ever done that. Most banks, the only letter they're going to send you is we're raising your APR for no reason other than we want more money from you. Or, or more fees. Right, more fees. There's, there's so this the, whole real estate, there's tons of fees. Investigate the local credit unions because they are the way to go. Invest in your community. So anyway, sorry to interrupt you, but I had a little rant there. <laughs> All right. Well, I think we covered it. You know, we're always updating the website. I mean, occupy yeah. Ukiah dot info yeah. with new information, and we'll put more of this information that we talked about today. You'll probably see it. Great, and you know, just to re remind everybody, if you really want to know what's going on with Occupy Ukiah, if you really want to know what's uh, going on with some of these issues, the website is a treasure trove. It's getting better and better every day, and um, I just really, you know, want to thank you again for all your work on the website. It's been just a blessing for us, and it really keeps us informed and going. So I think we've come pretty much to the end of our show. Uh, we want to thank uh, Greg and Sean in the booth. We want to thank Tom for coming today. And, uh, boy, I got the spring allergy thing hitting me. I'm a landscaper, and I get all that pollen in my nose, so pardon the, uh, pardon the stuffiness. But I'm going to read our Howard Zinn quote of the day to close the show. And uh, this is one of my, I've got a lot of favorite quotes from him. He's just such an awesome guy. There we've got Howard Zinn quote in front of the earth. That's always a nice view. And the quote of the day is, civil disobedience is not our problem. Our problem is civil obedience. Our problem is that people all over the world have obeyed the dictates of leaders, and millions have been killed because of this obedience. Our problem is that people are obedient all over the world in the face of poverty and starvation and stupidity and war and cruelty. Our problem is that people are obedient while the jails are full of petty thieves and the grand thieves are running the country. That's our problem. So thank you, Howard Zinn. He passed away uh, almost two years ago. And uh, that's going to close our number 10 show for May 11th, 2012. Uh, the Occupy Ukiah Report is signing off, and we'll see you around town. Yeah, and you can see all these shows uh, on the website. On the website. Tune in on the website, folks. <laughs>